What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Pack a Day Podcast. Appreciate you joining me today. I thought it'd be fun to discuss the post Devontae Adams era. Of course, we just saw him coming off another impressive performance. Only three catches, 70 some yards on Thursday Night Football, but two of the more ridiculous catches you will ever see in classic Devontae Adams esque fashion, beating Jalen Ramsey on the plays. We're still seeing a very spectacular Devontae Adams, it goes without saying, but we've also been seeing signs of life out of Christian Watson. We saw signs of life out of Romeo Dobbs as of late, and let's just be fair, saying signs of life out of Christian Watson and is putting it very mildly with the past four weeks that he has been having eight touchdowns in those four weeks, nine on the season. So the the question that got asked to me, a good friend of mine, uh, James Dujinski, uh, asked me, and this is, his, this is his direct quote, if the defense hadn't been bad all season, would the plan to let the offense kind of muddle along until the receivers got used to playing have worked? And I thought it was a really interesting question, which is why I obviously wanted to dive into it today. My initial reaction was, had the defense and the offensive line not been so bad to start the season? My answer was yes, but then I kind of expanded upon it a little bit and basically said, had everything else not been as bad, then probably yes. And here's what I mean by that. Let's just be blatantly obvious, right? You can go position by position on this team. There is not a position group that has held its water and met, at least met expectations for what we had for them going into the season. Not quarterback, not running back, not wide receiver, not tight end, not offensive line, not defensive line, not edge rusher, not linebacker, not corner, not safety, not special teams. In my opinion, there isn't one position group, or even if you want to go offense, defense, special teams, however you want to view it, there isn't anyone that has lived up to expectations. So my answer in you know to, to James was basically, okay, had had the quarterback, running backs, tight ends, offensive line, defensive line, edge, linebacker, corner, safeties, special teams, had all of that gone according to plan, I think we're now starting to see what Gutekunst's plan was at wide receiver. So in order to get to that conclusion a little bit more, though, I want to recap everything because I think it's important to remember, and it still seems important to point this out, even though we are now in week 14 of the regular season and it should be well documented by now, the Packers didn't trade Devontae Adams because they thought it would be fun or good for the team or best for business. They traded Devontae Adams because Devontae Adams was a free agent and he wanted to leave. And they were lucky in a couple ways. A, that they had a tool at their disposal by using the franchise tag that could make it that he couldn't just leave in free agency because he would have done that freely had they not had that tool and they would have got nothing in exchange other than a future third round pick as a compensatory pick. And then secondly, that they kind of were able to skirt the rules a little bit because technically you're not supposed to be able to franchise and trade someone. So they were able to kind of get away with that um, and they were able to get a first and second round pick for Devontae Adams. We can argue the small logistics of whether or not they maybe should have been able to get a little bit more, but I will say this. Devontae Adams had one destination in mind, and while he didn't have like ultimate leverage, he did have some leverage in the fact that he was a free agent. He didn't have to sign his franchise tag. He could have held out. It could have been messy. And in the end, getting him to the spot where he wants to go is probably the best thing for all sides. The Raiders could have played hardball and said, listen, he wants to come here. He doesn't want to go anywhere else. We don't need to pay you premium picks because he's he, you're not going to be able to trade him to any other team. He doesn't want to play for any other team. So there was some logistics issues there. The fact that they were able to pick up a first and second round pick while also saving money by not having to pay Devontae Adams a huge contract and being able to sign some of their own guys back seemed like it was probably about as best case of a scenario as you possibly could have had going into a situation that was always going to leave you left wanting more because Devontae Adams is a freak and one of the best absolute players in the NFL period, a Hall of Famer in my opinion, and you don't get better by trading that player away, but I thought they did as best as they possibly could. But it's worth pointing out once again that this was done because Adams wanted out, not because Green Bay thought that this was ultimately what would be best for the team. And every report and indication is that Green Bay wanted him back. They were willing to pay him more than what the Raiders were willing to pay him. He just wanted to go to Vegas. And that's what Green Bay did. And again, I think they did the best that they possibly could have in that trade and transaction overall with the Raiders. So 
What ultimately transpired in the offseason at wide receiver was this. Devonta Adams goes to the Raiders. You get the first and second round pick in exchange. MVS leaves for the Chiefs. They don't give him a huge contract. You allow him to go to Kansas City. Equinemius St. Brown is like the really interesting one to me, although with the choppy route that led to a game losing interception this past week against the Bears, maybe you understand a little bit more. He'd actually had a pretty nice season up to that point and also had the big completion against Jair Alexander early in the game, but they let him walk and he signs a minimum, bare minimum deal with the Chicago Bears on a one-year contract. I was surprised with all the you know changes at wide receiver that for a minimum deal, you don't just bring him back, maybe guarantee, I don't know, 25000 of his salary or something, and you're offering him a better deal. But anyway, he goes to the Chicago Bears. So you lose Devante, MVS, and Equinemius St. Brown. And in, as you all know, Sammy Watkins on sort of a cheaper free agent deal. It's not quite a vet minimum, but was a, you know, certainly not a, um, a marquee free agent signing, of course. Christian Watson, second round pick. They trade up their two seconds into an earlier second round pick and pick up Christian Watson. And then they pick up Romeo Dobbs and Samore Toure on day three. They bring back Lazard and Cobb. Amari Rogers had already been under contract, etc. You know the wide receiver depth chart, but that was what transpired in the offseason. Now, one thing I will not do today, no matter what conclusion that we get to by going through this, is I am not going to argue that they've adequately replaced Devontae Adams in any way. Just to give you an idea, for the difference in grades so far, through if you go through 13 games last year to 13 games this year, MVS, Equinemius St. Brown, and Devontae Adams, and clearly Devontae Adams was the biggest part of this, they graded plus 16.65 between those three through the first 13 weeks last year. Watson, Toure, Dobbs, and Watkins, the four guys they basically brought in to replace those three, negative 2.35 through 13 weeks this week. So even with Dobbs, you know, having some some uh, impressive performances and some, you know, some real signs that he can be a real player in this league, and even despite Christian Watson having four epic weeks these past four weeks, overall, the difference is massive in how they've graded out through 13 games in each respective season. And if you want to look at the wide receiver core as a whole through 13 games last year, the uh, the wide receivers in Green Bay were plus 20.8. And this year they are negative 2.4. So a 23.2 point difference when you look at how they've graded out through 13 games last year and this year. So in no way, shape, or form am I going to make the argument that the the Packers have done an adequate job of placing, you know, of putting the wide receivers um, in a position where they were even remotely similar to where they were a season ago. That being said, these wide receivers have graded plus 3.55 over the past four weeks. So almost like plus one a week, which if you go over a 17 game season is like a plus 17 grade almost. It's like a plus 14, 15, somewhere in there. But like that would be a very positive grade for this wide receiver group if they actually had the guys that they had and if they could continue to perform at this level. And those four weeks are even without Romeo Dobbs, who when he comes back and actually has Christian Watson as a weapon across from him, I think will even be improved from what he was showing earlier this season. And we really haven't seen Dobbs and Watson together at the same time, which potentially has the ability to be a very dynamic duo, not only this season, but certainly in in future seasons as well. So if we if we kind of recap it a little bit more and how they sort of transitioned into the post Devonte Adams era, it is very fair to say that Brian Gutekunst missed aggressively on Sammy Watkins. And heck, even just bringing Equinemius St. Brown back on a minimum deal would have been far better than going the Sammy Watkins route. Yes, kudos to Sammy Watkins for having a couple really nice blocks this past week. Kudos to him for really blocking well throughout this season. He's been one of the, the top blocking wide receivers, which has been something he's been good at throughout the course of his career and has continued in Green Bay. You are not paid to be a blocker when it comes to being a wide receiver. You are paid to be a playmaker, and he has not been that. And he hasn't stayed healthy. His hamstring issues that have hamstrung him throughout the course of his career have continued. And let's just be fair, he has been a bust for the Packers. And that's it just is what it is. And to the point where he probably won't see the field much, especially now that Dobbs is coming back, I would expect that we're going to get a heavy dose of Dobbs and Watson and Lazard and Cobb for the remainder of this year with maybe a little bit of Toure and Watkins sprinkled in. 
but they very much missed on Sammy Watkins. I'm also fairly certain that they were expecting some jump and some contributions from Amari Rogers going from year one to year two. Not only did they not get that, he was actually detrimental to the team in a variety of ways, primarily on special teams, to the point where they actually had to release him and they got nothing in return for him. So that was a massive bust as well, which was just a third round pick this last year in 2021. And you can't just miss on those type of guys. Had they picked a even remotely good wide receiver and the, with the third round pick last year, somebody that could contribute, this probably feels a lot different. Instead, having zero, I would even, wouldn't even say zero ROI, actually negative ROI on that third round pick from just 2021 is massively disappointing and has really hurt this wide receiver group as well. The other thing that has really, really hurt has been the injuries to the wide receiver group. While Sammy Watkins has definitely been a bust, he has missed four games at wide receiver. Romeo Dobbs has missed four games. Randall Cobb has missed four games. Christian Watson missed three games, but maybe even more importantly than the games that he missed, he basically missed all of training camp and preseason and kind of the lead up to the regular season, which affected him. And he didn't really start feeling like Christian Watson until four weeks ago when he sort of took off. And then we've started to finally see what probably Watson could have looked like from week one had he had the entire offseason program at his disposal and actually been able to do everything. Alan Lazard missed two games. So you start stacking up four games for Watkins, four for Dobbs, four for Cobb, three for Watson, two for Lazard. I mean, you've got a huge chunk of games that has been lost due to this wide receiver group. So add in the fact that they they missed on Watkins, they you know didn't get any contributions, in fact, negative contributions from Amari Rogers, a third round pick from 2021, and then all of those injuries to Dobbs, Cobb, Watson, and Lazard, and you end up with a recipe that's going to look very, very bleak at your wide receiver group. And we saw that early in the season where they simply couldn't beat basically, you know, press man coverage with one safety over the top and they couldn't do anything about it. They couldn't get off press. There were guys, there were plays where wide receivers go back and watch the Lions tape where they faced the worst secondary in football. And the Lions players were just legally just like throwing them to the ground, like pushing them to the ground to the point where you saw wide receivers on the ground. OTG in the scouting community means on the ground. It is a a terminology used for linemen for how many times you, you, you chart it throughout the course of a game when you're watching a, a college offensive lineman, or you can do it when you're watching an NFL offensive lineman, but you chart it to see how many times your offensive or defensive linemen end up on the ground because you can't do anything when you're on the ground, right? So you don't want OTGs. You, you want to keep that sheet clear. You don't chart OTGs for wide receivers. The fact that there were chartable OTGs for wide receivers at one point this year shows you that this was far from a complete wide receiver group and that it needed an influx of talent. That being said, I have a hard time telling you or saying to you right now that I don't actually really like a Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, Samore Toure wide receiver core. If those are your top five for this season and they were playing like this from week one and not hurt, I kind of like that group. I think you get a little bit of everything. We've seen what Watson can do. We've seen what Dobbs can do. We've seen what Lazard can do. We've seen you know Randall Cobb in spurts. We've seen Toure in spurts. I, I like that group as a whole. I think that group can be successful. Now, as we've discussed, does it replace Devontae Adams? No. Does it replace Adams, you know, MVS and EQ? Certainly not. But I don't hate that wide receiver group. And I go back to my initial response uh, to James when we were messaging about it is, I do think, first of all, if, if those guys were healthy and they weren't, like all of them weren't, which is really a hit uh, overall, but if those guys were healthy... And everything else was at least near expectations that we thought. If this defense was a top 10 defense, or certainly if they were top five, like some of us thought they had the potential to hit that ceiling if they really did well. If this special teams was significantly better than we, you know, than we they were last year and that we thought they could be, and it had this offensive line protected the way we thought they could, had you know Tunyon come back from injury well, had Rodgers played up, maybe not to MVP, but like close to MVP form. And all of those things happened the way that I think all of us almost expected it to. I think this wide receiver group would have been more than competent enough to not only, you know, to, to maybe go through some growing pains earlier in the season, but now maybe probably being like a strength of this team is, is very aggressive. I don't think it would be that. But I don't think we're talking about it as like, man, they just need wide receivers. Like they desperately need Chase Claypool. Like I said, I 
I don't hate if you were to go into the playoffs, all right, this year. Clearly, they're not going to. But if they if they were going to the playoffs this year with a top five defense, Rodgers playing near an MVP level, Aaron Jones being Aaron Jones, your offensive line uh, really playing like they have lately because they've played very well lately, like and and everything kind of as as we were hoping for going into this season. We're not talking about this wide receiver group being like what's holding this Packers team back. I really don't think so. I think it would be a fully functioning wide receiver group. And I think, quite honestly, Brian Gutekunst did a decent job, all things considered, trying to replace a legend in Devontae Adams and really hitting potentially a massive home run with Christian Watson. A home run in the fourth round with Romeo Dobbs, for, like that, that's Jamon Moore territory. Jamon Moore did nothing. Like you can get complete busts at that position. To get a Romeo Dobbs at that spot is huge. And then Samori Toure, seventh round picks are just like, you're just throwing, you might as well be blindfold throwing darts at a dartboard at that point. The fact that you get ROI in anything on that is impressive, much less again with a Samori Toure who's come in, he's caught a huge touchdown pass and he looks the part at wide receiver. So much so that when Brian Gutekinds was talking about his young receivers this week, he made sure unprompted to bring up Samori Toure as well. So I don't think that this is a, a bad wide receiver core. And I think Brian Gutekunst overall has done a good job with the caveat that he missed big on Sammy Watkins and uh, missed big on, you know, Amari Rogers in 2021, which affected this 2022 wide receiver core as well. So I do think that this plan ultimately could have worked at wide receiver. It was just everything else, unfortunately, didn't work. I do also think that he's, and as I've mentioned in the past, and I'm not going back on a previous episode that I recorded because I still believe in it. I do think he got caught in no man's land a little bit. And I do think that AJ Brown, and I'm not, I said this before he had the massive breakout as well, um, even more than he already was. Like we AJ Brown was always insanely talented. So yes, he's having a great year this year, but it's not like he was okay and now he's amazing. He was great and now he's amazing. So it's not like it, it, it's not like he came out of nowhere, right? But I do feel like if AJ Brown was available, like you, to me, it, it should have been just a three-team deal. It should have immediately been a three-team deal where you send Devontae to the Raiders, the first and second round picks go to the Titans, which is more than they got in exchange uh, from the Eagles, and then A.J. Brown comes to Green Bay. Do I know that they had the opportunity to talk with the Titans or that they even knew he was available? I know Brown probably wanted to be in Philadelphia. There's There's been talk of that as well. Maybe the opportunity didn't present itself. Maybe there were reasons that that couldn't get done. I don't know. I'm not in the building, but... If he was available, which he was, he got traded. If there's any way that you can get involved in that conversation, that would have been the perfect, like not caught in no man's land, right? You get an immediate player that can help you right now. And he's still super young. So you have a lot of long-term upside with him as well. That was the complete home run that unfortunately was the, like the swing wasn't even made. And again, I, I think that would have been able to avoid the no man's land that they were kind of in, especially at the beginning of the season. And even even now, like even though I think this this could have worked at wide receiver, you've got Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs, who would, in my opinion, be the top two receivers in this receiver room as you head into the playoffs. You don't really want your top two wide receivers to be rookies. And yes, Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, veterans that would play a part in that as well, and that Rodgers has trust in and can go to in some key moments. But if your top two are rookies, it's not ideal. And you're ultimately still playing for the future, right? When when Dobbs and Watson, hopefully next year, two years, three years from now, maybe make up one of the best wide receiver duos in all of football. But that's not what it is right now. And you're still, it's still a lot of potential with them. Potential that you're starting to realize in the form of eight touchdowns in four weeks with Watson and all the great stuff that Dobbs did earlier in this year. And hopefully they do the remainder of the season when they're playing together but it's still probably not the ideal when you were in an all-in season. Now, it didn't matter, right? Because everything else around this team kind of went to crap. So the fact that, like, I don't think A.J. Brown just fixes this. No more than Odell Beckham would have, or Chase Claypool would have, or any wide receiver. You can't add a wide receiver to this team and fix things. They, they can't tackle on defense. They can't heal Rashawn Gary's ACL. They can't play special teams. They they can't play quarterback. They like they can't fix Aaron Rodgers' thumb and his ribs. Like those things happened, and this and it's just not a good enough team overall. But that would have, in hindsight, still been the best thing that they probably could have done at wide receiver. So 
Not perfect by any means. I do think Goot deserves a lot of credit for the evaluations and the draft picks of Watson, Dobbs, and Torre. Because imagine this wide receiver group if they if there was another Amari Rogers in the you know in, you know that they basically you know spent um, you know instead of uh, Dobbs or another J- Jamon Moore instead of a Romeo Dobbs and if, if they missed on Christian Watson in the second round or like this wide receiver group could have been abysmal. So the fact that he hit really on three draft picks, two of which were on day three, um, is impressive. And I do think that the foundation and formula was there for this group to be successful. A perfect transition post Devante? No. And a huge reason for that was Sammy Watkins and all of the injuries that took place. But you can certainly understand the vision and you can certainly still be excited about the vision moving forward because it's tough not to be excited about a core at wide receiver that for the foreseeable future should be Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Samore Toure. They'll have to add a couple picks. And to be fair, I would not hesitate to add another top pick at wide receiver next year. Like load this wide receiver group up. We are seeing teams with insane weapons have success in the NFL. Like go out, put, you know, if you can put, you know, Watson and Dobbs and like another top tier wide receiver on the field with, you know, Toure being you know kind of your number four, now you're cooking with gas, whether that's Jordan Love or Aaron Rodgers. Now you've got some serious, you know, skills on offense and guys that can really take it to the house at any time. That I would be extremely excited for. But a young core of Watts and Dobbs and, and Toure is still very, very excited to be, uh, or very, very excited about moving forward. The last question, and I'm not even going to answer it today. I just want to throw it out there to break things a little bit. But my question for you that I will leave you with to answer in the comments below. If you had to start an NFL franchise today, right now, you're starting from scratch. You don't have any other players. You don't have any salary cap spoken for. You don't have anything. Who would you rather start your franchise with? Devontae Adams or Christian Watson? Devontae Adams, 30 years old, five-year deal, $140 million that he signed prior to this season. Christian Watson, 23 years old, four-year deal, $9.2 million starting you know, prior to this season. You make a strong argument that Christian Watson might be the answer if you were starting a new franchise today. Green Bay's not starting a franchise. They were supposed to be competing for a Super Bowl. They're not. Devontae Adams leaving for the Raiders is partially a, a reason why, but still an interesting conversation to have at some point as well. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Appreciate you as always. I'll be right back here tomorrow with an all new episode, but until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.